Thank you. Our baby bottle campaign benefiting the Women's New Life Center ends this weekend. Please place your offerings in one of the bins in front of the altar. If you didn't bring your baby bottle back today, please drop it off at the office by Tuesday. Substance Addiction Ministry meets Monday at 7 p.m. in the conference room on Melody. On Wednesday, confessions will be available from 5 to 7 p.m with adoration yeah, from 6 to 7 after, p.m. Right, right. Please take home this week's bulletin. It includes all the information about our Holy Week schedule. This information is also available on our parish website. Uh, Please you. note there will be no masses in the gym on Easter Sunday this year. There will be no morning masses on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, or Holy Saturday. Please join us for morning prayer at 7 a.m. on those days. The parish <laughs> office will be closed on Good Friday, March 29th, and on Monday, April 1st. The intentions for today's Mass is for Herman Fenger. Blessing from you before I do the gospel. I just got to say. Where the holy water? Where's the holy water? Where's the Good morning. Today we begin the holiest and most solemn week of the church year. Our Lenten journey of conversion and reconciliation has led us to the gates of Jerusalem, where Jesus was greeted by the crowd and set in motion the sequence of events that ultimately led to his passion, death, and resurrection. In our celebrations these next few days, we share in this great mystery of our faith. Let us approach this week then with our palm branches raised and hosannas on our lips. Now please stand, take your palm branches in hand and face the priest and assisting ministers in the center aisle of church for the opening rites of this liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace but of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exhortation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. To whom the lips of children may glad hosannas ring, you are the King of Israel and David's royal son. When the Lord's name calls now, our King and blessed One, all glory. it, you will find a coat tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this, reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a coat tethered at a gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the coat? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the coat to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is in the king. Blessed is the kingdom of our father, David, that is come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, from this gospel, I invite you to imagine 
what was going on in the hearts of the people, the crowd that spread their garments on the road for Jesus to step on them. For us today, we are not spreading our garments, but let us spread our hearts for Jesus to transform them. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowns who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. We join in acclaiming Jesus as our Savior and King as we sing together number 636 to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, number 636. To Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation. Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, gracious and grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Child church. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ears that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming into human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, and those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, (laughs) 
when he was in Bethany reclining the table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated and anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, break, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup gave thanks and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I you in the kingdom of God. And after singing the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should, should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. So then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. 
he advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, and he did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged the signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid, laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew a sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, Reply. Have you come out as against a robber with his swans and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging. <laughs> Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clowns of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, what further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're talking about. For he went out in the, to, into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again he denied it. 
A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had him handed over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted the game. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute with him. They kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon the Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also some women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought him in cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was silent and answered nothing. Dear brothers and sisters, we began our Lenten journey on Ash Wednesday, and with today's celebration of the Palm Sunday, we have entered the Holy Week. And Jesus, in his silence, the attention, the focus is given to him, the silent man. Even more focused, sharply focused is given to the greatest gifts the silent man Jesus will give to humanity. In this holy week, Jesus will give the greatest gifts we could ever imagine. The gift of his life, the gift of his body and blood from which we will continue to draw his life and he will restore our friendship with God. This silent man, Jesus, is judged, rejected, he is mocked, he is abused, he will be crucified. But this silent man is truly the son of God. I will take you back to the question. What is happening? We imagine what was happening in the heart of the crowd that sang to Jesus. Hosanna. We are beginning to see in the passion narrative the crowd is becoming more diverse and grouping itself into different categories. The crowd that is partaking the meal with him at the Last Supper. And Jesus breaks sad news. I am troubled. One of you who is eating with me won't betray me. And the mood changed. Thank God they had eaten the desserts. Even their appetite would have been destroyed. And they all started wondering and asking, is it I? Is it I? Until when Jesus revealed one who will dip the bread with me. And then others said, oh, I was almost passing out. <laughs> oh, now I feel comfortable. It's not me. A crowd that is fearful, that is confused, that is lost. We see another crowd that rejects Jesus, betrays him, and even shouts, crucify him. We see also another crowd at the courtyard 
that is questioning Jesus, judging him, and even demonstrating the authority and the power they have over him. But there is one silent, silent, admirable crowd. The crowd that truly confesses, truly, this man was the son of God. And this crowd is composed of women who ministered to Jesus. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the young James and Joseph and Salome. And these women who followed him in Galilee, ministering him among many other women. This crowd at his resurrection will be the first people to witness his resurrection. Among this crowd also we see one man, Joseph of Arimathea, a silent man who comes to take care of the body of Jesus after he breathed his last. Where do we belong? Can we locate ourselves? Are we confused even after all these days of Lent? Are you still wondering whether you are about to pass out? Have you fastened enough? Where are you? Are you basically saying crucify him by your lifestyle? Sinful life? Where are you? Are you lost in power and search for authority and recognition? And you cannot focus on this silent man, Jesus, who is about to give us greatest gifts than we could ever think of? Or are you truly prepared enough, ready to climb the mountain of Easter, and belong to this crowd that confesses, truly, this man was the son of God. Are you enlightened? Ready to participate in the Lord's resurrection? Above all, are you a humble disciple, which is depicted in the first reading and the second reading? The second reading depicts a humble disciple who suffers silently, without complaining. And that disciple is revealed in the second reading by St. Paul. He is the Lord himself. Though he was God, he humbled himself to the point of giving everything. A disciple who submitted himself totally to God's will. Have you prepared well enough these 40 days to submit yourself fully, totally, to God's will and participate in his resurrection? Let us all, with our humility, try to recognize in the silence of Jesus is truly the Redeemer, the Son of God. Let us now together profess our faith and believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the one to come. Amen. Together, we share our needs with the Lord who humbled himself to be one with us. Our response is, Lord, hear us and have mercy. That the Holy Spirit may sanctify the church in her observance of the solemn week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and have mercy. That God's exaltation of the name of Jesus may bring people of all nations to their knees, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and have mercy. That God may not abandon the distressed, the dying, or those sentenced to death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and have mercy. That Jesus may journey together with us through experiences of loss and sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us in that mercy. That Paul Michelet and all who have died may enter the heavenly Jerusalem, joining the angels and saints in giving glory to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us in that mercy. For these and all the needs we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us and have mercy. Let us now together say our family prayer. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Promsaka in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against the violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer, give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Promsaka, listen to help us. Mother Nuriendele, pray for us that we may be a holy family. As our gifts are gathered and presented, we sing number 501, O Sacred Head, number 501.
praying, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of the God and Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel or render the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted an unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Autumn to Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, his assisting bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Angela Merici, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, for earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious and grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you sent to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious and grant our peace and unity in our contents with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Amen. your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
As we come to the Lord's table, we sing number 564 in remembrance. Number 564. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. At the table with his friends Took the bread and said the blessing Then he broke it as he said In remembrance, in remembrance You must do as I have done Eat and drink my blood and body Be my love for everyone Jesus, teacher, Lord and Master At the table with his friends took the cup and said the blessing, shared it with them, and he said, in remembrance, in remembrance, you must do Jesus, grant us understanding of the saving signs you show in the sacrament of service. Help us live for others now.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who pour about the world, seeking the reign of souls. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. As is our Lenten custom, the procession is in silence. Please remain in your pews until the procession has passed. <laughs>